Getting into any hobby can be intimidating, and retro video games are no exception. I mean, there's so many different systems and games to choose from, and if we're talking about retro games, yeah, they can be expensive. However, there are a lot of options, and it may not be as bad as you think. The first question you have to ask yourself is why you're collecting. If the only thing you care about is playing these games, then it's really not necessary to hunt down physical copies as there are alternatives. However, even if the main objective is to play these games, there can still be a very appealing aspect to owning physical stuff. These games are artifacts of the past, and there's something to be said about playing something in the original format it came out. Okay, so once you've justified your decision to collect physical copies, you need to come up with a solution for what TV you're going to play these old games on. That's right, plugging these old consoles directly into an HD TV is not recommended because the resolution gets really distorted. There's a lot of details I could go into, but for this video you should just know that you're either going to need an old tube TV or equipment to run it properly on a more modern TV. Okay, the next step is to decide which system or systems you're interested in. Now, usually somebody will just go with what they grew up with. It's familiar, it's comfortable, and a really easy way to get back into playing some older games. However, I should say that if you grew up with one system that you enjoyed, almost guaranteed there are going to be other systems you'd enjoy. But don't worry too much about that, at least not right away. If you do want to get into something different right away, then go for it, but you can always explore those options down the road. Also, even if you pick up a system you owned as a kid, there is still room to branch out in the form of picking up games that you may have never played on that system. Maybe it's a game your friend had or that you always heard about but never got. For example, I never played Banjo-Kazooie as a kid and now it's one of my favorite games. You're obviously going to want to choose games that you'll enjoy, and so doing a bit of research goes a long way when choosing which games to play. These days it's really easy to just look up gameplay footage of whatever game you might be interested in. You can also check different forums and websites to see if people recommend a game or not. My rule of thumb is that if you see a game is repeatedly getting recommended, then there's probably something to it. Recommendations can come in various forms as well. Some games are just recommended overall as great games, and some games are recommended if you're into a certain genre of game. Pay attention to what type of games you enjoy, and if you're curious to try a new type of game, look up recommendations of what people think are good games for getting into a certain genre. Also, when you're starting out, it's usually a good idea to go for the more popular games. They're often cheaper, and this is because they sold well back in the day, and therefore there's a lot more supply to help keep prices down. I'm not saying that popular games are always cheap, but in general they are less expensive than more obscure games that didn't sell well back in the day. Alright, so once you have an idea of what you may want, you gotta figure out how to acquire this stuff. Obviously, free would be most ideal, but that's not always a possibility. However, it's worth a shot to at least ask anybody you know who might have some old games either lying around or even more likely packed away and forgotten in storage. Odds are if somebody has forgot about something for long enough, they're going to be more willing to part with it. And even if somebody isn't willing to flat out give you stuff for free, if they're your friend and know that you really want it, then they might at least be willing to give you some sort of deal. And when it comes to getting deals, a lot of people will be quick to recommend stuff like flea markets, thrift stores, and yard sales as places to look. But I gotta be honest, it's a lot harder to find good stuff that way than it used to be. This is because retro games became popular enough that lots of people were looking for it and scooped most of it up by now. However, it's still worth keeping an eye out, and it definitely varies depending on the area that you live in. There's also such a thing as local retro game stores, and you should absolutely try to support them if you have access. Again, those can be very hard to find, and consider yourself lucky if you have one nearby. But what if there are very specific games you're after, and you don't want to have to search around? 
Well, one of the more common ways to get games is from websites like eBay, and here you'll be paying market price. Now, what do I mean by market price? Well, the prices here are going to be determined by supply and demand. Games will only sell for what buyers are willing to pay for them, which in turn leads to sellers mostly pricing their games based on what people will pay. Now, I say mostly because there are some money-hungry yahoos who will try to list stuff for way more money than it will actually sell for. However, usually buyers are smart enough to ignore these listings. There's a very easy way to make sure you're not paying more than you have to on websites like eBay. You can either search for the listings that have actually sold over the last 90 days, or you can check websites like price charting, which will tell you the current going rate for any game as well as the history of its price. Do not base a game's value on what people are trying to sell it for. Base it off of what people have actually sold the games for, and make sure you always know a game's value regardless of where you're considering buying it from. Alright, I should also point out that if you're already a collector of more modern games, it is a viable option to collect compilations of older games if that sounds okay to you. Retro games have become popular enough that there are a lot of collections of older games that you can buy with the convenience of not needing the original hardware. Not to mention a lot of pretty spectacular remakes of older games that have come out, though it's still perfectly reasonable to prefer the original. Also, there is of course stuff like the mini consoles that are options as well. Hey, it's still collecting in its own way, it's just that it's hardware without physical copies of games. Whatever you collect, just make sure it's something you enjoy. I know that sounds like common sense advice, but it's very easy for collectors to get wrapped up in how their collection looks since they generally like to display it in one way or another. Don't feel like you need to have a ton of games right away. Just let your collection build gradually and be very methodical with which games you pick up, giving yourself time to actually play and enjoy the games before you move on to something else. Alright, so that's some of my advice for collecting, but there's obviously so much more that can be said. I've covered other aspects of collecting on my channel and will likely cover more in the future, but this video is specifically about some of the more important things to consider when getting started. That being said, I'm sure a lot of you watching already have collections, and with that probably some great advice as well. So for this week's question, I'd like you to share your best piece of advice for starting a collection. Alright, so go ahead and leave those comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video.